When you think of pirates, you probably think of rum-guzzling, treasure-hunting, eye-patch-wearing, yar-swearing bad boys of the high seas. But did you know that centuries before Johnny Depp suited up as Jack Sparrow, there were Jews who operated under the swaying Jolly Roger? Who were these Jewish pirates of the Caribbean? What motivated them? And what kind of semi-kosher mayhem did they get into? It all started in 1492, when King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain expelled 200,000 Jews. This purge of the Jews came from a Christian clerk who wanted to stop traditional Jews from influencing conversos, Jews who had converted to Christianity. Oddly enough, the clerk himself had converso ancestors. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! But we guess that didn't stop him. A number of these exiled Spanish Jews decided to seek revenge from their anti-Semitic monarchs on the high seas. These long-bearded, sword-wielding, Spanish-speaking members of the tribe were like something out of an overblown Tarantino vengeance fantasy. There was even a pirate nicknamed the Great Jew. His actual name was Sinan Reyes, and he was second in command to the pirate Barbarossa, Italian for Redbeard, in the early 1500s. The duo attacked their fair share of Spanish merchant ships, but it wasn't all fun and games and bottles of kosher rum. In the early 1540s, the Great Jew's son was kidnapped at sea by King Charles V of Spain, and Redbeard recaptured the kidnapped boy in an epic series of attacks that included sacking a small Spanish town and blowing up a fort. Another Jewish pirate was Moses Cohen Henriquez, considered to be one of the most successful buccaneers ever. He was supposedly the brains behind one of the biggest pirate halls in history, the 1628 capture of the Spanish Silver Fleet, a convoy of about 25 ships loaded with treasure returning from Spain's American colonies. Henriquez sailed with the Dutch West India Company admiral and low-key pirate Pete Hain, whose anti-Spanish agenda was inspired by his time as a slave on a Spanish ship. The silver and gold the duo lifted in the raid is estimated to be worth over $1 billion today. Not bad for a day's haul. Henriquez was a pretty wild guy too. He established his own pirate island, where he schlepped and hid his fortune, continued to advise Hain, and sailed the seven seas, eluding capture for the rest of his days. Other Jewish pirates were less tethered to the bad boy life. Yaakov Curiel, aka Diego Perez de Costa, was a converso Jew who commanded three pirate ships in the Caribbean seas and spent a good decade or so pillaging unsuspecting Spanish vessels. And then, he found God. He repented for his marauding ways, became the first ever Baal Teshuva pirate. Eventually, he made his way to the land of Israel, where he settled in Safed, a city in the Galilee, after becoming enthralled with the mystical teachings of Rabbi Isaac Luria, or the Arizal, the father of contemporary Kabbalah. Then there was the man known as the Pirate Rabbi, who terrorized the seafaring Spanish in the late 1500s, using part of his loot to found a community of Sephardic Jews in Amsterdam. The Pirate Rabbi supposedly kept kosher on the high seas, and may have even brought a chef along with him to make sure he wasn't eating treif. Jewish pirates tended to form partnerships with leading non-Jewish pirates of the day, this often led to remarkable crossovers of Jewish and pirate culture, including treasure maps written in Hebrew, ships with names like the Queen Esther and the Shield of Abraham, and tombstones in Jamaican Jewish cemeteries that bore the skull and crossbones. These sea-bound raiders fought for decades against the Spanish, attacking ships and sharing Spanish naval secrets with Spain's enemies, all while building up a mercantile network connecting trading posts around the globe. Some scholars shy away from using the term Jewish pirates, since a lot of the aforementioned people served in advisory roles to other leading pirates. But if we broaden the term to include buccaneers, smugglers, privateers, or, in Spanish, contrabandistas, there's a broad consensus that Jews at the time were involved in illegal trade and raid against the Spanish Empire. Maybe what we actually call them is not as important as just recognizing that they existed at all, and recognizing that the Jewish role in early mid-second millennia Caribbean maritime history was greater than we thought. These Jewish naval greats had profound influence on leading pirates at the time, and took their fate into their own hands by shooting back at the empire that tried to stomp them out. And many succeeded, which makes for some pretty thrilling stories of vengeance and self-determination, and highlights these pirates as colorful examples of Jews who stood up against their oppressors. If you like what we're doing here, consider subscribing, and if there's something you want us to tackle in an upcoming video, let us know in the comments.